Hi, this is Mrs. Marita. Welcome to AP Stats, Lesson 4.2e. Today we have two learning targets, 7 and 8. Describe a completely randomized design for an experiment, and describe a randomized block design and a match pairs design for an experiment, explaining the purpose of blocking in an experiment. To describe a completely randomized design, let's first do a little outline. So the diagram below describes a completely randomized design with 20 student volunteers. We see the random assignment step and the grouping, one and two, 10 students each. And in this experiment, they're looking at a caffeine or a no caffeine treatment, and then at the end we compare results. This is a great way to organize, especially when we get into more complicated experimental design strategies like we'll see later today, but this isn't acceptable for a final answer. Remember on your AP exam, you do need to describe this in a paragraph, how you're going to randomly assign, and more context about your group. Lastly, you can see in this experiment, there's 10 students in each group. There's definitely advantages to having the same number of subjects in each group, but that's not always the case. Sometimes we take a percentage of different populations, or sometimes it just doesn't work out exactly 10 and 10. But an important part of your experimental design is describing clearly how many subjects are in each of your groups. Let's look at an example. 4.2 Example 7. Concussion-related measures improved in high school football players who drank new chocolate milk. Let's look more into this headline. In the study, researchers compared a group of concussed football players given a new type of chocolate milk with a group of concussed football players who received no treatment. Part A. Explain why it isn't reasonable to conclude that the new type of chocolate milk is effective for treating high school football players with concussions based on this study. So to answer this question, we want to point out that it's possible that the group who received the chocolate milk treatment improved because they knew they were being treated and were expected to get better, not because of the new chocolate milk. This is an example of a placebo effect. Part B. To test the effectiveness of the new type of chocolate milk, you recruit 50 high school football players who suffered a concussion in the previous 24 hours to participate in an experiment. Write a few sentences describing completely randomized design for this experiment. First, we need to talk about our labeling, similar to how we would label in a survey or an observational study. So we're going to label the 50 football players 1 to 50. Use a random number generator to produce 25 different integers from 1 to 50 and give the 25 players who correspond to these numbers the new type of chocolate milk. Give the remaining 25 players regular chocolate milk. Then compare the concussion-related measures for the two groups. In this example, they didn't tell us how we needed to randomize our groups, and so we use the random number generator. With a sample of size 50, I suppose we could do names in a hat or a random digit table, but usually a random number generator is going to be one of the easier ways to write this up. Moving on to 4.2 learning target number 8. This is our last learning target, section 4.2. Describe a randomized block design and a match pairs design for an experiment. Then we're going to explain the purpose, so the motivation, why would we want to do a blocking in an experiment. In general, a completely randomized experiment is the simplest design that can give us good evidence for a cause and effect relationship. We're going to learn more about cause and effect relationships in 4.3. In some cases, however, we can add elements to the basic design to better control for lurking variables. For example, we learned about the placebo and placebo effect in a previous lesson and how we could use blinding or a double blind experiment to help control for that. A randomized block design is a special type of experimental design. This is when groups of subjects share some common characteristic that might systematically affect their responses. If we group them all together, it could be challenging to know if the results are due to our treatment or if they're due to this other variable that so many of our subjects have in common. So we can use blocking to control for the effect of this type of lurking variable. For example, maybe we suppose that older subjects are going to respond differently to, than younger subjects to some treatment for high blood pressure. And so we will block by their age. We'll have one block of older subjects, one block of newer subjects, and then within each block we'll give half treatment A, half treatment B. This randomized block design helps isolate the variation in the response due to age and makes it easier for the researchers to find the evidence if the treatment is having an effect. If we're only comparing two treatments, sometimes we can conduct a match pairs design. 
this is a very specific type of blocked experiment where there's just two individuals in each block. So back to the blood pressure and age, maybe our matched pairs design would assign the two oldest people in our study, one to treatment A, one to treatment B. And then the next two oldest individuals, one treatment A, one treatment B all the way down to the two youngest individuals in the study where one would get treatment A, one would get treatment B. Another type of matched pairs design involves assigning the two treatments to the same subject in a random order. Maybe for a month you try treatment A and then the next month you try treatment B. The researcher's randomization occurs in which treatment you try first. Some subjects will try treatment A first, some will try treatment B first. We also can do matched pairs on the same person at the same time if it's maybe mm, like face lotion or something like that. Sometimes you can do a left and a right part of your face or a left hand, right hand. Let's try the lotion A on left hand, lotion B on the right hand and compare which one improved your skin quality. But at the end of the day, we need to ensure our four principles for any good experimental design. Comparison, random assignment, control, and replication. 4.2 Example 8 Men, Women, and Advertising Women and men respond differently to advertising. Researchers would like to design an experiment to compare the effectiveness of three advertisements for the same product. Before we write up our final answer for this block design, let's do a quick diagram to visualize each of the steps. So we're going to start with 300 volunteers. And because our researchers believe men and women respond differently to the advertisements, we're going to block by gender first, then we'll randomly assign. This is the step where you would describe how you're going to label and select who's going into which group. We're randomly assigning our subjects to three different advertisements. Advertisement 1, Advertisement 2, Advertisement 3, and so on for the female volunteers. Next, we're going to compare the results within each gender. This is the step of the experiment where we can see if one of the advertisements is more effective on the women and maybe another advertisement is more effective on the men. But at the end, we will pull all of our results together and compare the overall results. Let's write this up as a paragraph. For part A, we want to explain why a randomized block design might be preferable to a completely randomized design for this experiment. A randomized block design might be preferable here because we believe men and women respond differently to advertising. By creating blocks by gender, we can see how people respond to the three ads overall, as well as how each gender responds to each of the ads separately. Part B. Describe a randomized block design using 300 volunteers, 180 men, and 120 women as subjects. Describe how you would carry out the random assignment required by your design using a random number table. All right, here we go using the random number table. First, we would number our men 0012180 and women 0012120. We have three different ads, so we need three blocks of men, size 60, and three blocks of women, size 40. To randomly assign the men to blocks, we're going to use our random digit table and read three digit numbers to select the first 60 men to be assigned to ad number one skipping repeats, and skipping 000. We're also going to skip any digits that are 181 through 999. None of these digits correspond to any of our subjects. Similarly, continue to select the next 60 men and assign them to add 2. The remaining men will be assigned to add 3. Similarly, repeat this process to assign the women to their ads, but select 40 women for each block. Last, to perform the experiment, we'll show each group their advertisement and compare the effectiveness between each ad and gender. Then we'll compare the overall effectiveness of the ad by bringing the blocks together for each ad. Our last example is a matched pairs design. A matched pairs design we talked about earlier in the video, this is a special type of block design where each block is only of size two. So if we started with a group of eight participants in a matched pairs design, we would match each participant with its closest partner. This could be by age, by weight, or maybe a health topic that they're studying. And then the second step is randomly assigning one participant from each pair to either the treatment or the control group. At the end of the experiment, we can go back to these individual pairs and see which individual within the pair did better, and then we can combine all of our results and see did the treatment have any effect.
4.2 example 9. We want to describe an experiment with a matched pairs design that could study if standing pulse rates are generally higher than sitting pulse rates. Let's describe how you would carry out an experiment on a high school class of 38 students utilizing a matched pairs design. For this matched pairs design, we'll do the experiment by having both treatments done to each student, randomly assigning the order of the treatments. The random assignment is important. We could do matched pairs with two individuals who maybe are similar in height and weight and gender. That's a lot of pairing. But in this case, the best pairing would be to do the experiment on the same individual twice. Once with the individual sitting, once with the individual standing. This is going to be the closest type of pairing we could possibly do. It's the exact same person. But the random assignment to treatments is necessary. So we could have each student flip a coin, and if the coin is heads, they would take their sitting pulse rate first. If the coin is tails, they would take their standing pulse rate first. Once all 38 students have taken their pulse rates for both standing and sitting, we'll compare the results and see if there's evidence of a higher pulse rate while standing.